The formidable Apache control a 30,000 square mile territory around the site in the satellite image. After five centuries of peace, they are drawn into war. In the 1730s, the Apache came into conflict with the Spanish, who were seeking to expand their land holdings in Mexico. Their raids against the Spanish were both savage and calculated. Between 1771 and 1776, the Apache slay 1,600 Spaniards and steal 68,000 animals. They were one of the first groups to fully adopt the horse and become horseback warriors. Spanish horses and guns empower the Apache. Hardened by battles and betrayal, they defend their land ferociously. The Apache became so dangerous that it was just too difficult for people to pass through the mountains. Passage is vital for the Butterfield Mail Company, who, in 1858, broker a truce with Cochise, an Apache leader renowned for his willingness to embrace white settlers. For a few years, the Apache would allow the postal workers to go through the pass unscathed. Indeed, they even trade commodities and so forth with the stagecoach. It's an unrivaled armistice sadly shattered on February 3rd, 1861. Lieutenant Baskin of the U.S. Army accuses Cochise of kidnapping an American child. And in fact, he had not. But this whole event is going to end in bloodshed on both sides. Much of it at the Battle of Apache Pass. The Apache were prepared to fight and they had studied American military tactics. In July 1862, 500 Apache warriors ambush U.S. forces led by Captain Thomas L. Roberts. Roberts retreats to the Butterfield Mail Depot and readies his secret weapon, two 12-pound mountain howitzer cannons. Nothing the Apache had at their disposal could compete with the massive firepower possessed by the Americans. The Apache would have been terrified with these howitzers that would literally cut them to pieces. 63 Apache are slain by howitzer shells. The rest flee. The battle is over. The war has just begun. What this event triggers is 25 years of warfare between the U.S. Army and the Apache. In 1864, to defend Apache Pass, the U.S. military establishes the structure in the satellite image, Fort Bowie. Fort Bowie will become ground zero to try and deal with this Apache menace. This was an original window that they then bricked up. And most likely, it turned into a rifle opening to shield the shooter in case of attackers. The war pits U.S. generals against legendary Apache tactician Geronimo. While Geronimo was hugely important to the Apache nation, he was never actually a chief. He was known as a shaman. There were those that believed he had supernatural powers and couldn't be shot. Led by their invincible shaman, Geronimo's Apache take advantage of their local knowledge. They used guerrilla warfare tactics, which means hit and run, retreat back to the mountains, and then do it again. There was really no quarter on either side. The United States Army committed 5,000 of the active duty army to chasing down Geronimo. The war claims tens of thousands of casualties. The fallen are buried in desert graves like those by the fort in the satellite image. Fletcher, 1880. Unknown Apache child. Another Apache child, 1885. Oh, wow. Son of Geronimo himself. Little robe. 
In 1886, Geronimo surrenders, effectively ending the Apache Wars. After a quarter century of conflict, friend and foe rest side by side. This shows that they came to some sort of truce to bury them right here in the same cemetery. The ruins of Fort Bowie and its cemetery are reminders of all who fell at Apache Pass and a stark warning from American history. What we can see from space was the beginning of the end before the Apache were broken and put onto reservations. And even though it's peaceful and tranquil now, this place has a long history of bloodshed and unrest.